regarding pew dismissal, removal of masks, and direction to return to your pew. Today, the mass is offered for Nancy Bella Bradick. Good morning, and welcome to the fifth Sunday of Lent. Please rise and meet and greet those around you. Our opening hymn is Jose. Please join in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ handed himself over to death so that our death might be transformed and lead to eternal life. He is the source of our salvation and the source of our joy. Let us free ourselves of the burden of our sins and run after him with enlightened hearts, even as he draws us all to himself in the Eucharist we now celebrate. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you forgive our wrongdoing and remember our sin no more. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give life to our mortal body. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are food for eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, for they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from least to greatest, shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now. Yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. It was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it, said it was, and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wrote about a moment in his life where he faced a crucial choice, a crucial test. He was kneeling in the kitchen of his home where someone had thrown rocks through his window, broken his windows, and threatened his life. And he was kneeling there praying, and in his prayer, he asked himself and he asked God, is it right to that, that I should expose myself to these dangers? Is it right that I should expose my family to, his, to these dangers. And in that moment of prayer, he felt God stirring and strengthening in him. And he said that he rose from that floor, determined now to carry the fight for civil rights to the end, to expose himself and his family to what else. And in that moment, he accepted what eventually would be his assassination, right? And everything that flowed from his life, his ministry, and his witness is the fruit of that moment, that moment when a seed was planted, when his heart was broken open. I want you to think about seed for a minute. Is there anything more compact and defensive than seed? Last year, last year I planted a, a big flower garden. Don't look for it this spring. I'm, I'm not planning on planting much this spring, right? As I adjust a new pattern of life and a, a new kind of schedule. But last, last spring, I planted a, a huge flower garden. And I remember, I, I, I planted several uh, tithonia, I think they're called. They sometimes call them uh, Mexican sunflowers, right? And when I ordered those seeds, there were only 25 in a packet. And when I ordered those seeds, they were so tiny. It was like the smallest flake of a thing. I, I, they didn't even look like seed to me. They were so small and so difficult to handle that when I went to plant them in the little styrofoam cups that I was using to, to grow the seed, to start the seed, when I went to plant them in the starter soil, it was so difficult to handle to make sure that I didn't lose them before they got into the soil. 
these tiny, tiny little things like hardened chips of stone. If I would have tried to split one with an X-Acto knife, I'm sure it would have shot across the room on me, right? Is there anything more defensive than seed? That hard little shell that's wrapped around that potential life within, right? To protect it, to preserve it. We're tempted sometimes to go through life like that, aren't we? To build a shell around us and around ourselves and those we love. To become so protective, so worried that someone might take something from us, right? That someone might want what is ours, that we might lose something that is of value to us in our life. We hunker down in our culture, protecting ourselves like seed, right? Listen to what Jesus says to us today. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains but a single grain. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and allows itself to be broken open, shares itself with the water and the soil, softens itself to allow the life within it to sprout. Unless a grain of wheat does that, it remains a defensive little speck. But if that grain allows itself to fall to the soil, to saw heart of the treasure it carries, then, then, it produces much fruit. It is abundant. We are not meant, brothers and sisters, to live defensively, securely, protecting what is ours and insisting on our own self-containment and self-dependence. According to Jesus, we're meant for the opposite of that. Think of any great saint and hero that you might think of. St. Maximilian Kolbe, right? St. Maximilian Kolbe, when he stood there amid the, the crowd in that concentration camp, when the Nazi guards reached for one who was his neighbor so that they could kill and punish and brutalized, Maximilian Kolbe might have remained just a seed, just a potential inside his hard little covering, saying, well, at least it's not me. But he did not do that. What did Maximilian do? He stepped forward and he said, I am a Catholic priest. Take me in place of this man. And so he let that seed of his life fall to the ground and burst open. And he started a movement that is still rolling across the world today, a movement of consecration to Mary, a movement of Franciscan charity, a movement of poverty and self-emptying that still motivates the world so much today. How many of you have been to a confirmation a class filled with young people and haven't found at least one Maximilian Colby among them, right? If he had stayed alive and protected himself, but his witness to the world would have been sacrificed. What about St. Catherine of Siena, that young woman whose life began as an ascetic in her parents' comfortable home, in a small room, living a life of asceticism, eating so little, punishing herself, doing little errands of charity for people. 
And yet over time, those works of charity opened up her heart and her life to the place where she marched right into that jail cell, cell and converted that prisoner who had been condemned to death. And then with such strength, such power, such compassion, cradled his head in, his ar in her arms, looking into his eyes, whispering to him of the love that God bore for him as the executioner separated that head from his body. Receiving with such compassion, Catherine of Siena allowed herself to be broken open, to fall to the ground and die, and from her witness rose an evangelizing flame that changed the course of Europe and the world and the church. A modern saint, Saint Stanley Rother, right? to whom I hope you're all remembering to pray, right? Because Father Joe Rasher asked us to play, pray to St. Stanley Roche, uh, Rother for intercession for his healing. St. Stanley Rother, who a priest of the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City, not too far from us, who went to Guatemala to lead the people there and found himself caught up in a civil war when he was warned that the death squads were coming to target him at first, he allowed himself to be carried away, but within days, he returned to his people. And when his people begged him to leave him, to, to walk away, to preserve his life, Stanley Rother simply said, the shepherd does not abandon his sheep. When he died, his parents asked for his body to come home. And the people of his parish allowed it after a time, but not until they had removed his heart and placed it in their church, where it gives them strength and power and comfort and a connection to the love of Jesus, even today. Own oh, neighbors and friends, those ASC sisters, who having once stepped out of Liberia during a time of civil war, having been able to return, decided no, they would not abandon their neighbors again, and who remained there and laid down their life in an act of charity so that their neighbors would see that the gospel is larger than nation or race or economic status. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. And it's not only those who make the news, whose hagi hagiographies get repeated. This week, I was talking to a, mo a single mother who is struggling to send her son to college, right? She said, if it's laying the ground for his life to be full and rich and complete, I don't mind eating a little less often. I don't mind struggling to pay the utility bills. Laying our life down in love. I spoke a, a while back with a couple that was having marriage problems. They had always had a, a loving and energetic and wonderful marriage. And then caught up in his own grief and depression, the man had lied to his wife. And she discovered the lie in a public way that embarrassed her and hurt her. And their marriage was challenged, put upon, not too long ago, I saw them again, and uh, some things had happened for them, and they had, had had a rebirth and a rekindling of their love. And I asked her in a spare moment when, I, uh, when we were uh, by ourselves, I said, it seems like things are better for you and your husband. And she said, yeah, yeah, they are. And I said, how did you do that? How did you get over that? How did you over, get over that hurt that he caused you? And he said, you know, she said, you know, I just know that when I got married and I said, I do, and I told him that I loved him, 
I gave him the power to hurt me. And he did. And so she said that he will do it again. And with a smile, she said, I do. I do. It is in the dying to self that we bear fruit. That's what Jesus means when he says, whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it to the end. He's not talking about a person who hates the life that God has given us. When he says, who hates the life in this world, when he speaks of this world, he's speaking about all those powers and temptations and preoccupations of the world that keep us from focusing on the love of God and from living our lives self-sacrificially after the pattern of the cross that prevent us from laying down our lives and letting our hearts be softened and letting that love of Christ burst out from us. All the things that want to tempt us to remain our little hardened, self-isolated, seed-covered potential that never finds its expression. That's what Christ wants us to die to. That life that is an illusion that we hold on to so dearly in our protected little space. If we'll let ourselves be emptied of that, to let that be softened in us, and to give ourselves over for love of our neighbor, to die to that false self so that we might rise to the Christ who lives in us. See, that's what's happening when works of charity take root in us and lead us to self-sacrifice. That's what's happening. We hear about it in the prophet Jeremiah. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. When the example of Christ on the cross takes its place in us and allows us to lay down our lives and stop protecting ourselves against the lives and needs of others, then, then we are living out of that law of God, the law of love that is written. And we live no longer ourselves but Christ lives in us. And that is seed that will always bear fruit. Those little Pithonia seeds that I planted last year, I, I ended up getting four plants that hardened real well. I, I planted about six or eight, put in my little styrofoam cups. I ended up getting four that hardened up really well and I, put, I set them outside along the back of my garden. Now the catalog said they were supposed to get to be three feet high, but these bushes from that tiny little seed, when it broke itself open, they grow up, they were over eight foot in height with these beautiful three inch red orange flowers. And the thing about these bushes, I may try to put one out this year. The thing about these bushes that is so amazing is that the, the, the butterflies and the hummingbirds flock to them, right? And so there in my backyard, starting with that little seed that I couldn't have split with an X-Acto knife without a lot of trouble, came all of this warmth and joy and playfulness and flutter, right? One morning during the migration, I woke, and those bushes were covered with thousands of butterflies that were making their path back home. when the seed is laid in the ground, when it softens, when it dies, it bears much fruit. Let us bear fruit for the kingdom of God.
as baptized members of the church, this does not work. As baptized members of the church, we are called to die to self so that we may be transformed into Christ. Let us be conscious of the needs of our world. Well, I got ahead of myself. Let's first proclaim the creed, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now let us be conscious of the needs of our world as we lift these needs to the Lord. For the church, that God's covenant, which is written upon our hearts, may help us know the Lord more deeply and guide us in serving God each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of repentance, that God will free us from our false attachments and sinful actions, move our hearts to celebrate the sacrament of penance, and open us to the power of forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who lay down their lives for others, that God will guide and strengthen parents, caregivers of the sick, and those who assist the marginalized to be instruments of God's love and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are recovering from storms and natural disasters, that God will protect them from further danger, give them strength, and the speed and assistance which they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For successful administration of the coronavirus vaccine, that God will guide the distribution and administration of the vaccine and protect all the human family from the virus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the violence of mass shootings and the healing of the tendency toward violence in our culture, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are approaching death, that they may surrender themselves into God's loving care and enter into the fullness of life with Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Free of our life, that to experience real transformation, we must be obedient to your will and die to self. Like the grain of wheat that falls to the ground, help us to let go of evil and selfish ways and find our true life in you. Through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold, rather, to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all who serve you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life at, with, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be on earth as of us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but look on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. blood of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Amen.
As we approach to receive communion, please wait to be dismissed by an usher. Center aisles will be dismissed first, followed by the side aisles. Use the hand sanitizer station before you receive and approach the X on the floor directly in front of Father. Receive the Eucharist in your hand, move to the next X. Remove a side of your mask and place the Eucharist in your mouth to consume it. Replace your mask and return to your pew. Our communion hymn is Wash Me, Cleanse the body Me. Of Please join in. You are the Lord. Amen. The body of Christ. Wash me.
the body Our of second Christ. song is Jesus, remember me. It's the body of Christ. It's the body of Christ. It's the body of Christ. The body of Christ. It's 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 the body of Christ.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> to exit church, please remain in your pew until an usher dismisses you. Pews will be dismissed from the back to the front. It is great to continue to see everybody here on Sunday for Eucharist. Please remember to sign up for Mass and include the number of people in your family who will be attending. Remember, as you leave the pew, please lower the kneeler so that it will be disinfected. And a few announcements. As a reminder, Mass is celebrated on Wednesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. and Stations of the Cross on Fridays at 6.30 p.m. during Lent. We continue to collect items for a pregnancy care center and canned goods for the local food pantry. A list of items is on the table in the gathering space. Also, confessions will begin on Wednesday evenings prior to Mass at 5.30 in the confessional and on Friday also at 5.30 p.m. Thank you. And then remember, next week already, Next Sunday when we gather, we will be uh, celebrating the Palm Sunday of the Lord's Passion, right? And we'll be making our way, our entryway into Holy Week already. Um, it seems almost impossible, but here we are. Remember, if you haven't had the best of Lent, if you failed in your intentions, if you have weakened, think about uh, life in Christ. We can always begin again. And so we have another full week of Lent, and then... We enter into Holy Week, and we can be faithful for that amount of time and more. And so now is a good time to begin again. Next week when you come to Mass, you'll see we'll have to do things a little differently because of the COVID restrictions. So when you come in, you will receive palms, but someone will hand you the palms. We can't have people just grabbing into a pile of palms. They'll hand you palms to hold in the pew, and then we will. I will bless those palms uh, with holy water that I've just blessed that day, that nobody else has touched, right? And we'll bless the palms for you that way, so that you'll have palms uh, next Sunday. And we'll see that throughout Holy Week, there will be little adjustments that we make to our Holy Day, and some larger adjustments that we make to our Holy Day liturgy to make sure that we are protecting one another uh, from this COVID virus. So we pray that this may be the last Easter we have to worry about this, we hope, huh? We'll pray for that, and we'll celebrate and remember what Christ has done for us with fullness of heart and gratitude for what we can do together. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down your head for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our recessional song is a new one. It's Somebody's Knocking at Your Door. Join in, please. your door. He's knocking at your door. Ooh, tis me. Why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Not like Jesus. Somebody's knocking at your door. Not like Jesus. Somebody's knocking at your door. Oh, sinners. Why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. <coughs> Jesus calls you. Somebody.